Yo, what is up ladies and gentlemen, it is your boy Zethi here and I am back at it again to drop the movie version for What If Deku Was Meruem's Reincarnation. Now, some of you guys may be new watchers, some of you guys may be old watchers who are just clicking on the video just to maybe leave a like for your boy or, you know, click off of the video and click on it one or two times just to give me extra views. I'd really appreciate that, by the way. But that being said, though, I hope you guys enjoy the story, the full series of What If Deku Was a Marum's Reincarnation. But with that being said, let's just go ahead and um, um get started. <laughs> Okay, so we start a story off when Deku was born. See, this version of Deku isn't going to be like our original canonical canon self. This one, seeing as he's the reincarnation of Meruem, is going to be born a lot different. When Deku's born, the doctors and everybody around Deku can just feel a weird aura off of Deku. See, immediately they can tell that Deku isn't like any of the other kids that have ever, you know, basically been born here. Everything's different for this kid. See, for some reason, they just feel a sort of aura of power coming off of him. And when Deku was born, he didn't cry. Growing up, Deku learned things extremely fast, and he just had a talent for learning things and having a real aptitude for just being a genius overall. By the age of four years old, Deku already had Nezu's level of intellect due to the fact that Deku spent his, you know, his his early years instead of being a little kid like any of the other ones and just being you know mindlessly playing with toys or tablets or stuff like that Deku learned how to talk even earlier than any normal kid would he would have learned how to read faster and he would have ended up doing research reading books gaining as much knowledge as he could physically get and by this point of the four years old he already had Nezu's level of intellect so by the time that he got to preschool and he finally met Bakugo, when Bakugo tried to act as if he was superior by reading, you know, things and stuff like that, Deku would honestly just show up Bakugo in every single way, shape, and form when it comes to, you know, just simple intellect. Bakugo would think that he was the smartest, but every time that he would do something, Deku would just you know, just show them up. Anytime that the teacher would ask a problem such as, hey kids, can any of you guys tell me what this problem equals? Bakugo would just be like, oh yeah, it's this. And then the teacher would ask something even harder and Deku would immediately just be like, yeah, uh, that's pretty easy. Let's come on now. Like, and he would just answer these questions honestly, just incredibly fast. Deku would be way different than any normal kid. And that's putting it lightly. Deku would spend, well, the next couple of years just kind of staying out of Bakugo's ways, and Bakugo would just feel as if Deku was a little weird. The reason that Bakugo felt this way is because one day Bakugo tried to fight Deku, but when he did, Deku didn't have like a normal reaction that he was expecting. It was at this point after Bakugo had unlocked his quirk, Deku never seemed to praise Bakugo or never seemed to feel amazed by his quirk. And Bakugo always wondered if it was because he had a better quirk than him or or if it was just because, you know, he just felt he was better than him. Bakugo could never wrap his, he his finger around Deku. And that's something that always irked Bakugo. However, one day when he did try to step it to Deku, Deku responded in a very calm way. When Bakugo went up to Deku and he was like, hey Deku, how about you show off that little quirk of yours? If you think you're so high and mighty, let's see what your quirk is. Deku would have literally just been reading a book and he would close it as he would look towards Bakugo and just say, I don't have one. Bakugo would look towards Deku as he would say, what? You don't even have a quirk? And you think you're better than me, Deku? As Deku would look towards, you know, no, Bakugo would look towards Deku and laugh. As Deku would look towards Bakugo and say, I don't think I'm better than you, Bakugo. I know I'm better. Bakugo would look towards Deku and give him a little bit of a weird, like, angry but confused stare as, you know, he kind of just glares at Deku and it's at this point that Deku just walks away from him. After that day, Deku kind of just stood out of Bakugo's way and so did Bakugo. They kind of mutually agreed to kind of just get out of each other's ways and when Deku would see the bullying go around him, Deku would have a little bit of a weird perspective on things. He would wonder why these kids just let it happen instead of using their little quirks as people call it to defend themselves Deku would really only respect and view the the certain people who you know can actually tell him what to do being his parents and Deku would grow up a lot different than the original canonical version of Deku see 
by the time that Deku was 10 years old, he had already gathered a mass amount of knowledge. If you guys thought that Nezu in level intellect was something, now he basically got that by the time he's 10 years old. Imagine that times 10. Deku is now literal a super genius. Like he literally has brainiac levels of intelligence. And that is off of just studying. And by this point, he knows all there is to know in terms of, you know, the world. But now he wants to know more. But since he can't, he decided that now he's finally going to focus on his physical stats. Seeing as Deku never thought that he needed to do that. Deku, even though he never had tried to fight, he just knew that he had a resting power within him. He knew that he had a power within him that could not be tamed. And uh, he's very right at that. Deku would proceed to basically start trying to train in martial arts. He would have asked his mama if she could write him up for karate, and by the first week of being in the class, Deku would have mastered each and every single form of karate as well as defeating his master in combat. He would then take boxing, kickboxing, taekwondo, just jujitsu, any little martial arts form that you can think of, Deku would end up taking it and mastering it in record-breaking time. And it's at this point that Deku just kind of spent the next five years up until the day of the sludge villain just kind of perfecting his craft. He would kind of be taking in knowledge. And at this point, Deku would realize that, you know, heroes and villains are not really in the way that people all view everything. It's not just black and white. It's, it's more of a gray area. Not all bad people are bad because, I mean, he's stopped a couple of criminals before and for some reason they just didn't give off an evil aura. And it's at this point that Deku starts realizing things about the world. The world that he lives in is tainted. And it's Deku's mission to change that. But how's he going to change it? It's not like he's just going to go around and, you know, rule everything with an iron fist. There has to be some way to influence people. And that's when Deku finally realizes that the easiest way to influence things is to become somebody like the symbol of peace, All Might. All Might seems to have a giant influence even though he's not somebody of real importance, he's just some hero who everybody idolizes. And that is when Deku would realize what he has to do. He needs to become a pro hero, somebody fit to call himself the number one. And Deku would, after realizing this, would basically just keep uh, waiting as he would, you know, just realize that he's probably going to have to go to UA if he wants to accomplish that goal. And this is when Deku would proceed to essentially just, just grow up as normal. He'd kind of just keep learning more and more stuff and keep doing more martial arts, more ways of fighting. He would have also ended up working on his physical strength, seeing as Deku Meruim was born as a literal monster. Like his strength, speed, intelligence, stamina, it was off the charts. It's it's just not, it's, it's, it's inhumane. But I mean, makes sense seeing as he's a chimera ant. But this version of Deku is a human. And this is when things will slowly start to change. Around the age of 14 years old, Deku would have basically just been sleeping and having a dream where one day he woke up in a strange room. He would wake up and it's immediately when Deku would start to take in his surroundings and actually start to question where he is when he would see a creature, not a man, but sort of humanoid being walk up to him. Deku wouldn't even be on his guard seeing as he doesn't deem it as a threat, he doesn't feel any malicious intent coming off of it, and Deku would just continue to ask, what are you doing here? The strange figure would reveal itself and it would be Meruem in the flesh. Deku would see this and this is when Meruem would sit down to Deku, as he would say hey. Deku would look at him as he would sit down in the same position and he would then proceed to ask him who he is, why does he feel so familiar? Meruem at this point would begin to explain to Deku that that they are one and the same. Deku would look at Meruem as he immediately just questions what he means by they are one and the same. To which Meruem would look at Deku and explain to him that they are the same person. He's his reincarnation. And Deku would then begin to say, oh, I've heard about that. Didn't really think that was true. Deku would sit down and ask things about his previous life. Like, what was he like? How did he die? And this is when Meruem would begin to explain things like, you know, what powers he had and the people that he fought against, as well as explaining Nen. Now, Deku or Meruem didn't, wasn't born with Nen. Meruem was, I guess you could say, he got it after learning it from somebody. But this version of Deku 
can't really learn it from anybody. And Meruem can't really just teach it because, you know, Meruem has to visibly, like, see it in the real world, not just some dreamland where he can, like, practice in there or something like that. And, you know, Deku would start to be explained what the principles of Nen is and all that stuff. And Deku would basically start trying to understand what, you know, this Nen's concept is. Deku would start going around trying to find some books after this day and he never found a thing. There was not a single trace of Nen. It seems that he lived in a different reality where Nen just didn't exist. Deku would contemplate this thought and he would just think that, you know, Nen isn't really that necessary. He can rely on nothing but his physical strength and intellect to get by with in this world. I mean, these people are simpletons. What would they know? Deku would proceed to basically just look around as this is when we're now finally going to have a time skip to the day of the sludge film. Deku would be in the back of the class, which he's kind of just relaxing. And this is when the teacher would walk inside telling everybody that, you know, they're going to become heroes. As he would throw the papers in the air, everybody would start agreeing as well. They would begin to all just kind of talk about, you know, you know, who's going to be a hero. Bakugo would get on the desk and do his normal bravado where he tells everybody that he's going to be the future number one. Somebody even better than All Might. Now, after hearing that, Deku's ears would kind of perk up as he would then begin to look at Bakugo's direction. And he would then, like, from nothing but cheers, he would then say, and how do you expect to do that? Your quirk is mediocre at best. The only reason you seem to be the strongest is because you've never, ever had any real competition. And Bakugo, after hearing that, would turn at Deku's direction as he would say, what was that, you quirkless bastard? Deku would look towards Bakugo as he wouldn't say another word and he would just kind of stare at Bakugo as Bakugo looks at Deku he would basically like try to like intimidate Deku but he would see that Deku is completely unfazed Bakugo would explode his desk and Deku would just look towards Bakugo's direction as in a split second Deku would grab Bakugo's wrist and break it as Bakugo would scream out in pain the teacher would say Deku what are you as Deku would say he struck me first therefore he initiated this so if you're going to get anybody in trouble, it better be Bakugo. I'm going to be leaving now. As the teacher would basically just be like, uh, and Deku would literally just leave the room. It's at this point that Deku would essentially proceed to kind of just be chilling. As, you know, Deku would literally just look around and, you know, he would go home. He would take the same path that our original Deku would do, where, you know, he would basically be attacked by the sludge villain. But before the sludge villain could do a thing, Deku would turn around and immediately just kick at the air before the sludge villain even had a chance. And the wind pressure created from that would have been more than enough to send the sludge villain flying, spreading to pieces. As Deku would walk over to the sludge villain, he would say what were his intentions. As the sludge villain would look at Deku and say, Give me your body, kid. Deku would immediately be like, I figured. You're one of those villains, aren't you? As a sludge villain would look at Deku and say, Ah! As immediately, before Deku had a chance to do a thing, this is when All Might would appear, as he would say, I am here! And he would look towards Deku's direction. As Deku would look at All Might, he would then see as All Might basically throws a punch at the sludge villain, and he didn't even see that Deku was there, so he would actually almost send Deku flying back if it wasn't for Deku just incredible strength Deku would hold his ground and not budge the only thing that really moves in the wind is his clothes at this point Deku would be looking exactly like what you guys see in the thumbnail basically a humanoid version of Meruem and it's at this point that All Might would look towards Deku as he would basically ask him if he was there the whole time Deku would say he was and that that punch was definitely something but if he wished to get the maximum results for throwing that type of hit he would have ended up basically looking towards All Might as he would throw uh, a hit like similar to what All Might did, but he would do it in a more finesse filled way and he would put even more strength to back up the punch. After All Might sees this, he would say, Whoa, kid, you'd really do pack a haymaker. As Deku would just look at All Might and say, Yeah. So, yeah, if you want to, you know, get the most power out of that hit, it's better if you throw it like this. As All Might would take that into consideration, he would then thank Deku, and this is when Deku would basically just say, All right, I'll be going now. As all Might would proceed to basically look at Deku and just be like, yeah, kid, you do that. Deku would stop All Might before he can go. And he would ask, he would try to ask him something. But All Might would say that he has to go. As this is when Deku would look towards All Might's direction. And he would literally see as All Might would jump off. Deku, though he wanted to know the, uh, the answer to his question, he would kind of just think. Should he follow him or should he just let All Might go? 
And at the end of the day, he would decide that, you know what, he needs to have his question answered. He would jump alongside of All Might, as All Might would be thinking that he was all alone in the air. He would then see that the kid that he literally just left by back there was like right beside him. And Deku would then be like, hey, I need to ask you something. All Might would look towards Deku as he would say, dude, what are you doing? And they would land on the building. As like right before Deku could even ask the question, All Might would be covered in a, in a thick fog of smoke. And this one All Might would transform into his little, little All Might form. As Deku would immediately look towards All Might, he would say, huh, so that's why you haven't been able to do that much hero activity lately. That's exactly what I was going to ask you. All Might would immediately just look at Deku and say that, look kid, I don't really want to say too much, but you have an injury, Deku would say, as he looks at All Might and he picks up his shirt, as he would say, yep, right here. All Might would look at Deku as he would say, how did you, and Deku would just say that you, the movements you make, just your subtle movements gave it away, as All Might would ask him how he knew that, and Deku would then say that he doesn't know why All Might got so many surgeries, instead of just got a new whole respiratory system in and of itself. And this is when All Might would finally realize that Deku has a point. He would then look towards Deku and ask him why he thinks that that would be a better fix. And Deku would then begin to tell All Might that, well, his respiratory system is all messed up. So why instead of trying to fix something that's already broken, why doesn't he just get a whole new one? With the technology available nowadays, he could have done that years ago. And All Might would immediately just give a call to somebody that he knows. He would ask him if that's possible. They would tell him that it is and that, you know, they've done it before, but, you know, they don't know why they'd never even thought about that. And All Might would then look towards Deku's direction as he would say, huh, you're a one smart kid, you know that? Deku would look towards All Might and say, uh, yeah, sure. As All Might would basically look at All Might and say, so, uh, so what's up, kid? Is that is that really all you wanted to ask me? Deku would look at All Might and he would then ask him why everybody listens to him. Why does everybody view him as some sort of god? Even though his power is not even that great. I mean, he's like a small island level at best. And All Might would say, wait, what do you mean small island level? Deku would then start telling All Might that he means that in a sense of like, that's how powerful he is. That's all he could obliterate if he was to put his full effort into trying to destroy something. And All Might would then realize what Deku means. He would then say, interesting. How'd you know that I'm that strong? As Deku would say, well, your prime self is that strong. Now, you're more like mountain level. As All Might would take that in and just be like, oh, you don't say. And Deku would look towards All Might as he would say, yeah, I do. As All Might would kind of just be taking all this information in at once, he would ask him what his quirk is, as Deku would say that he's quirkless, and All Might would then ask him how he was able to perform that punch earlier that changed the weather. Deku would look at All Might as he would then say that, you know, he doesn't need a quirk to be powerful, All Might. All Might would look towards Deku and question this, and this is when Deku would basically tell All Might that he has to go home now. His mom wanted him home pretty early. As All Might would ask Deku if he's, he can have a little bit of a chat tomorrow, as he would ask Deku to meet him at a coffee shop the next day. Deku would of course take the card, like like take down All Might's number, and he would say he can do that, as he would then go home and just have some dinner with his parents. As Deku would explain to them both that he ended up meeting All Might today, and they would ask him if he got his autograph, as Deku would say he didn't, you know, there was no real reason for him to get his autograph, seeing as he's going to be meeting him the very next day. As they would say, what? And Deku would then say, yeah, I have a little bit of a lunch meeting or whatever with All Might. As they would both just be shocked. Inko would literally pass out from excitement. And Asashi would just be sitting there in complete disbelief. As Deku would begin to explain this to both of them, they would just be shocked. Like, straight up. How would you feel if your kid just came in out of nowhere and was like, yeah, I'm having a meeting with, you know, like, the literal symbol of peace. You know, like, the strongest hero in the world. As, uh, yeah, it's a... Uh, it's kind of something you don't hear every day so yeah they're both pretty shocked and Deku would then tell them both that you know he's kind of tired that he's gonna go off to bed it's at this point that Deku would go into his room and just kind of play video games he took a real liking to that stuff he took a really really big liking to video games and there's one game in particular that he really likes it's called one's justice um, <laughs> you know in case you're not watching the gameplay in the background you know I suggest you do it now and uh, yeah uh, this is basically how things are pretty much playing out for Deku for the most part. This is when Deku would meet All Might at, you know, the coffee shop the very next day, and he and Deku would begin to talk things out a little bit. All Might would then begin to explain to Deku that he's been looking for a successor, and he would ask Deku if he's willing to be just that. 
Deku would ask him what he means by that, and All Might would then begin to explain that he can pass on his quirk. Deku would then say, huh, so you're kind of like all for one. As All Might would immediately look towards Deku and just be like, how do you know his name? To which Deku would look towards All Might and say, oh, that guy? He makes a pretty big name for himself with the things that he does. As All Might would basically look towards Deku, and this is when Deku would explain to All Might that, you know, with, with enough research, you can find almost anything in the internet, even your real identity. As, you know, he would say Toshinori. As, you know, obviously that's not a secret. But, you know, not a lot of people know All Might's real name, I guess you could say. No, 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 I'm not going to say that. He would say Nana Shimura. Uh, you know, you're the successor of Nana Shimura, am I right? As All Might would say, what? And he would just be shocked by Deku's level of intellect, honestly. Like, he's just completely alarmed by how smart this kid is. He's just in, unhuman. Like, like just straight up, this, this man is just completely inhuman. Like, and this one, Deku would basically just bring up the question to All Might of why he's looking for a successor. To which he would then point out to All Might that if he's going to get that surgery done, he doesn't need one anytime soon. Sure, he can have his eye out for somebody, but, you know, for the time being, if he's going to, you know, fix himself, there's no real reason for All Might to do that or go through with that. As All Might would take that into consideration, he would then say that he's right. And Deku would then say he knows he's right. You know, he's usually never wrong. All Might would then, after hearing Deku say that, would be like, wow, this kid is, you know, he's pretty, pretty blunt. And it's at this point that All Might would then begin to ask Deku if, you know, he wants to train with him. Deku would basically look at All Might and just kind of decline this as he would say that there's no real reason. I mean, he's stronger than All Might as it stands, so there would really be no real purpose for Deku to fight All Might. To which All Might would immediately raise an eyebrow at this and just be like, there's no way you're stronger than me, kid. And Deku would look at All Might as he would say there is. You want to really put that to the test? All Might would say sure, and Deku would then say, how about we go to Dagoma Beach? As All Might would say sure, and let's race there. As All Might would say alright, and before All Might could even knew, Deku would have literally body flickered right over to the Dagoma Beach. As it's at this point that All Might arrives there, and he would arrive there a little tired, might I add. As All Might would then stare down at Deku, as Deku would have actually ended up clearing a little portion of the beach just for All Might and Deku to fight. As All Might would see that Deku ended up clearing the same amount of beach area that Deku cleaned in the 10 months, just in a matter of, of minutes. As All Might would just be shocked by the sheer speed of this kid, and he would be sweating bullets, thinking that maybe this kid is stronger than me. All Might would put that to the back of his head, and this is when Deku would look towards All Might's direction, as he would say, you ready? As All Might would say he is. But before the battle could have even started, Deku would blitz over to All Might's direction as he would hit five pressure points on All Might's chest. And All Might would literally drop like a bag of potatoes. Like, like it, it's just on sight. All Might would have been blitzed, tapped in five places in the way that Tai Lung did in the Kung Fu Panda movies, if you guys have even seen those. See, because I'm pretty sure a lot of people that clicked on this video were Hunter x Hunter, you know, fans. Uh, so yeah, uh, you know, anybody who's a Hunter x Hunter fan, you know, glad to have you here. Make sure you hit that subscribe button just a little bit of a you know promo for myself i guess you could say after that all might would wake up after all my you know kind of hits another couple pressure points to wake him up all might would then wake up as he starts breathing heavily and he asks that kid how he's so strong what does he use deku would say that it's nothing but his raw physical strength and training his intellect as well and all might would then just be dumbfounded by this kid's power and just intelligence he would set up a meeting with nezu and he would ask Deku if, you know, he's aware who Principal Nezu is. As Deku would say that he is, he would look towards All Might as he would say, so I finally get to meet the famed Nezu. All Might would say he sure does. And he would then say to meet him at UA the very next day. You know, he can set something up for them to talk. As, you know, Deku would basically meet Principal Nezu the very next day. And Deku would then go into the, the principal's office, honestly. He'd literally walk up in there with All Might after All Might picked them up in a car. And they would both meet, you know, Nezu inside of his office. As soon as they sit down, Nezu would say, Ah, Midoriya, I've heard a lot about you. He would say, Sit down, do you wish to have some tea? As Deku would look towards Nezu's direction, he'd say, Sure, I'll have some tea. As Nezu would say, Perfect. He would pour some tea for Deku, and it's immediately when Deku's like, This is incredible. How do you make this? Nezu would give him the recipe, and he would say, Huh fairly simple 
as he would basically proceed to talk with Nezu. And this is when Nezu would actually ask Deku if he wants to play Shoji with him. As Deku would literally look towards Nezu and say sure. As they would both literally get in a game of Shoji, which Deku just completely and utterly destroys Nezu. At this point, Nezu's literally never been beaten that, and Deku just did it with no no effort, or minimal effort, I guess you could say. And after that point, Nezu would ask Deku if he wants to come to UA. As Deku would see that that is the plan, you know, he wants to become the symbol of peace. Nezu would ask Deku why that is, and Deku would then begin to explain his philosophy as well as reasoning. This world seems kind of corrupt twisted many heroes around these days are complete fakes they do it for nothing but the money the fame the glory it's been far gone the only true heroes that are around nowadays are people like all might and even then you know he's not exactly an exemplary hero i guess you could say as neza would look towards deku and he would start laughing as he would say you can say that again as he'd begin to have a little bit of a smart conversation with nezu they would both start talking about things as well as such as society and heroes and villains and just the humans overall as nezu would finally be able to talk to somebody about this without feeling as if he's talking down on a human for some reason, Deku just doesn't give the same aura as normal people. And Deku would then say that, you know, well, he is the reincarnation of a chimera ant. To which Nezu would ask what that is. Deku would then say it's nothing. And he would then begin to look towards Nezu. As Nezu would say, well, looks like this video's been long enough. I think that this is a pretty good place to leave it off. Deku would look at Nezu as he would say, really? It is? Okay, so we start the story off right after Nezu and Deku finished talking that day. See, on the last part, we basically had left off with Deku and Nezu having a little bit of a conversation about just hero society and just humans as a whole. Now, after all of that had basically happened, Deku would essentially proceed to, well, just pretty much go home and he would just rest up. This is when I'm now going to start covering the 10 months of training that Deku is going to be having. During the 10 months, Deku pretty much just meditates throughout most of it and hangs out with Nezu every other, you know, couple days that he can. Anytime Nezu is free, Deku would basically go over to UA and just play Shoji with him. This would actually lead to Nezu getting a way smarter than his original version, and this would lead to Deku and Nezu growing a little bit of a closer bond. Deku and Nezu would end up enjoying a whole lot of tea, and, uh, you know, Deku's hair would get really soft like Nezu, just because, uh, I don't know if you guys remember that, but Nezu was like, yeah, my, my you know, my fur is really soft. But, uh, you know, just that stuff. And in terms of All Might, instead of picking a successor, during this time, All Might would have spent his time recovering from his organ surgery. If you guys don't remember, Deku would pretty much mention that to All Might, told him why doesn't he just replace his, his respiratory system instead of trying to fix it. I mean, it's already destroyed. Why try to fix something that's broken when you can just use a new one, you know? They would have done the surgery and it would have been a huge success. The most amazing doctors in the world would have been working on him, of course. And, you know, that obviously contributed to the reason into, as to why, you know, it was all good. That being said, you know, Deku just kind of hung out with Nezu a couple of times. And, you know, Nezu and Deku ended up becoming sort of best friends, I guess you could say. It's the weirdest thing ever. What if Deku was Marrow's reincarnation literally turns out to be Deku and Nezu just best friends. Like, they're besties at this point. And Deku, of course, would talk to Meruem in his mindscape from time to time. Meruem would give him some advice, and he would tell him not to go about things in too much drastic way. He tried the same thing, and it just didn't work out the way that he expected it to. You can't just get rid of the humans. You have to change them for the better. And that's exactly what Deku's planning to do by becoming the number one hero. He doesn't just want to become the number one hero of Japan. He wants to become the hero of the world, not somebody who saves petty crimes or banks but he wants to be the one who's known for saving the world not just some you know some robberies or you know some villains destroying the city he wants to be the one who people look look at and they're like it's him you know like he saved us all you know like sort of figure type of god i guess you could say that is basically how the 10 month 
training what or not even training because this version of Deku like literally doesn't even train at all not because you know he doesn't even need to train anyway so you know that's pretty much how that happens and now this one we will be covering the entrance exams now at this point Deku was kind of only going to the entrance exams as a little bit of a formality he only goes in because well you know it's not like he's just gonna be like oh yeah I'm in already even though he could be because Nezu offered him that he literally just said yeah I could just throw you in there but Deku was like you know, there's no real need. I could just take the exam as a formality and just, you know, kind of show that I'm here in a way that All Might would say. Because at this point, All Might has been hanging out with Deku a couple of times. And, you know, they've definitely done a little bit of sparring. Oh, wait, no, they haven't done any of that since All Might, as I said, recovering. <laughs> he would have barely became good about a week prior to the UA stuff. And around that time, All Might was busy. So he had no real time to hang out with Deku or spar with him at all. So Deku just spent most of the time meditating, as I has already said. Now, this is when Deku would basically just be at home as he puts on a pretty crispy outfit Deku would literally put on like a white a white shirt you know it'd be pretty fitted it shows off the muscle definition quite well you know he's wearing some green cargo pants you know some like some pretty dope ones at that like you know they're not ugly you know like they're drippy ones right like they're fitted perfectly and they're not they don't have like pockets all over the place they're like really fashionable ones right and of course He's wearing some forces just because, come on now, like, he, he needs some forces. Come on, he look drippy. He look drippy. Anyways, that being said, Deku would basically just be walking and he'd kind of be having, like, just some headphones on. He'd be wearing some AirPods, some ear pods, and, you know, he's basically just walking in. This is when Deku would look up and he would immediately see somebody standing in front of him. It would be none other than Bakugos. He's giving him a bit of a death stare and he'd say, hey, Deku. You got some nerve showing your face around here, you quirkless wannabe. As Deku would immediately just walk past Bakugo, Bakugo would grab Deku by the shoulder and spin him around. As before he can even throw an explosion at Deku, Deku would just release his aura or his nen and immediately Bakugo would just cower in fear as he would feel the presence of a literal god before him. He would immediately just let go of Deku and just fall onto his ass as immediately Bakugo was just like, I, I, I and Deku would just keep walking. So at this point, the Deku was basically just listening to his jams as, you know, our boy Deku's, you know, he's vibing to some music. He would proceed to basically start walking as this is when Deku would see somebody tripping and about to fall. Deku would immediately go up to them as he'd grab them and this would be none other than Uraraka. He'd grab Uraraka and say, hey, <laughs> you should be careful. As Uraraka would basically try to say something to Deku, but you know, he would kind of just walk away and say that, you know, she should concentrate on the exam. Uraraka would say, right and she would continue to go inside this is when Deku would go inside and take the entrance exams as he would get a perfect score on everything not just the written portion but the combat and like the the teamwork portion that they had to do on you know the original version of My Hero Academia he pretty much takes the, the exam and he ends up meeting people like Momo Yairozu and, Toto, and Shoto Todoroki and that's pretty much how things are playing out for Deku in this version of events now from this point, we are going to be skipping on over to the day of first day of UA as, you know, there's not really any content to cover if I don't just skip over here. So, yeah, Deku would proceed to put on his school uniform and this is when he would basically go to school a lot earlier than anybody else. He'd be there about two hours early as Nezu told him and invited him to pull up and at this point, Deku's parents know that Deku has like a pretty cool relationship with Nezu. At this point, they'd both be thinking that, yeah, their, their son is set. Like, he's literally best friends with the principal of the school. He's gonna graduate. Perfect. As, you know, Deku just goes off and he would say bye to his mother Inko is she basically gives him a big hug and tells him how proud she is of her son. I mean, he's going to the best hero school in all Japan and he's quirkless. Little does big mama Inko know that, you know, our boy Deku, he not quirkless. And also, you know, she still gets chubby just because, come on, mama Inko, like, come on. She got to be a little chub chub, you know, she, she has to have a little some some on her. Anyways. This is when Zeki would go over to Nezu's office and they would basically just play some shoji and drink some tea, doing what they usually do. Afterwards, Deku would suggest to Nezu if they can go to the weight room that, you know, print the school has. And Deku would go in there as he would put about 2,000 tons on each side of the bar. And the bar would be literal titanium, so it can hold up the weight pretty well. Deku would start 
press bench pressing that as if it's nothing and Nezu would just be like ah yes the bench press it's pretty good for building muscle isn't it as he'd basically go up there and grab like a tiny little barbell and he'd start showing Deku the motion that he does to which Deku would show him how to do it properly and Nezu would be like huh thank you Midoriya after this point Deku would basically just continue talking with Nezu and they'd be talking about the students who were coming in Nezu would begin to talk about the people and Deku would give a little bit of a warning for a certain student. This person is of course Bakugo and Nezu would say, I'll keep a good watch on him. If he does anything to showing out of the ordinary, we'll kick him out. And Deku would look at Nezu as he says, don't you think that's counterintuitive? Nezu would look at Deku and Deku would continue to tell Nezu that instead of just trying to kick him out to get rid of the problem why not fix it themselves they're the greatest hero school of all japan for a reason instead of kicking people out who are doing bad they should try to fix them and nezu would hear out deku and be like you're right never saw it that way he would say all right good to know as he would tell he would say oh my look at the time deku you must be going out to class now and at this point it's around the time that deku would end up walking into class in the original so deku would do just that and this is when deku would walk into the class as he would see bakugo and ida arguing deku would get a weird stare from bakugo of sort of fear and anger and deku would just go over there and sit by the back next to todoroki it's at this moment that todoroki would turn to deku and ask him he'd be like hey as deku would look at him he'd be like hey what's up Todoroki would look at Deku as he would say, I saw what you did in the, you know, the entrance little, the, you know, the uh, recommendation exams. As Deku would say, yeah, it's pretty easy. Todoroki would look at him as he would ask him what his quirk is. Deku, right before he even got the chance to say he was quirkless, Uraraka would come in and be like, oh my god, you're the kid from who I saw earlier. As she would thank Deku for saving him. And she'd say, oh my god, your eyes. I love your eyes. She'd look towards Deku and start complimenting him a little bit as Deku would say thanks. And he would continue to try to talk with Todoroki, but before he gets the chance, ne uh, our, our boy Aizawa would wake up and he would continue to tell everybody to throw those on and meet him outside. Araka would of course be like, but what about the orientations? And Aizawa would look at her as he would say, we're heroes, we don't have time to waste on some orientations or for people to tell you how great you are. You don't, you don't really need to be told how great you are, just, just do it because you have to. As Araka would be like, uh, yeah, right and they'd all basically proceed to go get changed it's at this point that all of them are basically just vibing and when Deku takes off his shirt and everybody's kind of just minding their own business Kirishima would say dude you're ripped what do you even do as he'd basically pick up Deku's shirt as he just put it on and Deku would get like a little a little red in his face he'd be like what are you doing and Kirishima would feel in his abs as he's like dude you need to show me how to get as ripped as you. As Deku would say, I don't see why not. How about after class? Kirishima would say that he could definitely do that. As Deku and Kirishima would look at each other, Deku would wonder why he reacted that way, but he'd kind of just put it to the back of his head. And it's after this point that people like the class would just be looking at Deku. Mineta ain't even focused on the girls. He's focused on Deku, no homo. He's wearing socks. But come on now, like Deku is looking like a Greek god and he wants a piece of that. Like... <laughs> Anyways, um, this is when Deku and everybody else would basically go outside and reminiscent to the scene of One Punch Man taking the hero exam and stuff like that in the One Punch Man thing, this is literally how the entrance exams would go for Deku. He would continue to do literally the almost the same thing that uh, Saitama did when he just destroyed everything and like destroyed the long jump, the, the ball through, all that stuff. Yeah, Deku would just obliterate the ball through. He'd throw that thing straight into orbit. And in terms of the speed, like, dude, he'd literally get an even better score than Ida. He'd break All Might's score by, like, 10 times. Barely trying. Oh, no, I mean, I'm gonna, he's, like, putting most of his effort into it. Not maximum effort, but most of his effort, right? I can't make him that broken. I mean, I know Merum's goaded and all, but I can't do Merum this much, you know. I can't praise him this much, you know. Anyways. That being said, as I said, Deku would break every record that there's ever been set in UA. And, you know, everybody would just be completely shocked. It's legit a scene, uh, excuse me, reminiscent of One Punch Man. And after this, Deku would basically just, uh, just be surrounded by everybody. As they're all just like, dude, what is your quirk? Aizawa would look at all of them and he would say he's quirkless. 
as his eyes would be shining red and he would have been trying to use his quirk on Deku but he couldn't erase a thing. Not on any single one of the tests he was able to erase any quirk. And Deku would then be like, yeah, I'm quirkless. Bakugo would say, there's no way you're quirkless. As he'd say, no quirkless person could, could muster up an aura that powerful. You must have something. As Deku would basically tell him that no, he doesn't have a quirk. Bakugo would be like, oh, whatever, Deku. And he'd basically proceed to go off. As it's at this point that Deku would ask Hiroshima if he's ready and they would both basically get dressed as they would get their bags and they'd go to the UA gym to which Nezu would actually end up tagging along and Kirishima, Nezu, and Deku would literally just be working out in the weight room. Even Nezu was lifting weights. It was the funniest thing ever. Like imagine Nezu lifting weights. Like that's just, it's beautiful. It's, it's a, uh, you know. It's, it's it's very gorgeous right you know it's, it's very good <laughs> anyways after that Deku would proceed to go home and about let's say two to three days would go by to which at this point we would be on the day of the heroes versus villains at this point everybody would basically just have gotten to know each other a little bit better seeing as it's been about four days since then and this is when you know everybody would just be kind of you know just as i said getting to know each other a little bit and you know they'd all just kind of be vibing with each other nobody really has any problems with each other they're all just straight chilling you know they're they're all some pretty good friends and deku would just be in class as all my would burst in through the door saying i am here as immediately deku would just kind of be sitting there like kind of be just looking at all Might, and he'd be like hey all Might." As everybody in the class would have just been dumbstruck, like their mouth, their jaws would have dropped, and they would have been like, "Oh my!" As Deku just literally sat there, and they're like, "Dude, it's all my. Why are you not freaking out?" Deku would literally look at at everybody else, and he'd be like, "What? I'm like all my. I'm cool with them." And all my would walk up to Deku as he'd basically lean over and whisper in his ear, "The surgery was a success." I'm perfectly recovered, by the way. So if you want, after class, we can maybe spar. And Deku would smile a little bit as he would think that that's perfect news. As at this point, Alme would continue to do his little speech about telling everybody that the clothes make the pros and just kind of, you know, just it's it's, it's really just All Might being All Might, I guess. Like that's really all I can say. Like there's no real other way to summarize it. And uh, yeah, it's at this point that well, he basically gets told that you know they're all gonna need to go get changed as Deku Deku's hero outfit would be hmm I guess it could be Meruem's outfit does Meruem uh, here let me look it up also so, apologies for the keyboard shiny I probably just like just uh, defiled your <laughs> probably just destroyed your ears uh mm, Meruem's outfit should I get I mean I might as well come on like th there's really no reason for Deku not to get yeah Deku has Meruem's outfit right and yeah that's basically how Deku walks out everybody would see Deku and the girls would see Deku's abs as oh god they waterfalls are going all over the place like if like like I'm pretty sure little drops of water would just fall into the ground and uh <laughs> No, but seriously though, everybody would be looking at Deku as the man is ripped. Kirishima would slap Deku on his back and Deku would stare at him with like a confused look as he'd say, yup, my man Deku, and someday I'm going to be just as ripped as him. As he'd basically look towards Kirishima, give him a little bit of a nod, and it's at this point that everybody would be told who they're going to be going up against. After Deku was told that he was going to be fighting against Bakugo and Ida, it's immediately when Deku and like that matchup gets called that Deku would literally just say, hey, uh, uh, no, as Alma would say, what do you mean? No, Deku, as he doesn't say Deku, but he says young Midoriya, as immediately Deku would just say, I don't want to fight Bakugo. That'd be too easy, All Might. You know it as well. Bakugo isn't even half as half to my level. As Bakugo would give Deku a death stare, Deku would say that that would be way too easy and Bakugo himself knows it. As he would stare down at Bakugo and say, right, as Bakugo would literally give Deku, like, look down at the ground because he's just terrified of Deku, and he'd say, right. And it's at this point that Ida would say, there is no way you're just going to let him choose his things. We, this is UA. And you're speaking to All Might. How about a little bit of respect? As he'd go up to Deku and like smack him in his face with his hand. Immediately, Deku would grab Ida's wrist. And before he can do anything, Baku would just say, how about you just get out of there, Ida? As Ida would literally walk away and get pushed away by like Baku himself. Because he knows what was going to happen next. That man was about to get his whole wrist broken. Like There, there was no ifs, ands, or buts to it. He was just going to get his wrist completely shattered. 
it's at this point that All Might would look at Deku and ask, what do you suggest we do then? I mean, there's nobody else for you to fight. As Deku would look at All Might and say, there isn't, he'd say, I I'm pretty sure there is. He's standing right in front of me. All Might would look at Deku and he'd give him a little bit of a grin as Deku would do the same back and immediately All Might would say, well, if that's what you want to do. He'd basically throw a little bit of a facade telling the students that, you know, everything will be okay. And it's at this point that he would basically say that their match will be at the end. As everybody else would have their matches, Bak one team would be like a, a four, three on three, the team that Bakugo was basically got out of. And uh, after all the matches would happen, we would then leave off with Deku. Okay, excuse me for that. But we then go to Deku versus All Might. Now, this one, all of the students would basically surround them all. And they would go over to some field as, you know, Deku would basically just crack his neck and start popping some bones as he'd be just be like, just like, you know, like doing that as yes, I just popped my knuckles. Yeah, kind of hurt. But anyways, uh, <laughs> Deku would do just that, crack his neck and he'd start stretching a little bit. He'd tell All Might, he'd hold out his hand and he'd be pointing out like he'd be, he'd have four fingers in, in the, in the air as Deku was basically trying to tell All Might that he's only going to use 40% of his power as immediately All Might would smile knowing that, yeah, he's not going to get done dirty too bad in front of the students. And before anything can happen, Deku and All Might would blitz at each other. They would start punching at each other. All Might would start landing blow after blow at Deku and Deku would be tanking all of them as he would smile and say that this is amazing. All Might definitely got, you know, his money's worth with what he, what, that surgery he got on himself. All Might would be smiling and Deku would be having a blast. He'd be having some, a pretty good time. Deku would, you know, lower himself to about 20% to make the fight even more fair. And this is when Deku would then throw a punch so powerful it could destroy mountains. He would throw it right at the side of All Might, right before anything else could happen. And he would end up, like, literally, the clouds, all of them from like a 100 mile radius would just all disappear. They'd all disperse. The sky would be clear, like, literally clear. And All Might, like, his hair would have fallen down, like, the little spikes that he has up, they fell down. And he'd look at Deku as he was just dumbstruck, like, completely dumbstruck. Deku would look towards All Might as he would tap his face and be like, I win. As All Might would then say, yeah, we're going to end it off here, kids. Everybody would look at Deku and people would just be like, this kid is insane. Dude, how are you this powerful? People would just start surrounding Deku and Deku would just start getting applauded by everybody. It's at this point that Deku would basically just end up saying that it wasn't that big of a deal and you know the day would end after this people would basically go home and they'd start you know posting stuff on their social medias talking about how there's somebody even more powerful than deku they'd post the emoji that like covering his mouth the one that goes shh you know that one and you know it just one of the tweets would actually go viral it would actually be let's see kirishima street right kirishima's uh tweet would end up going viral and people would start questioning what do they mean by that is there somebody at ua that's like rivaling all might or something like is the next symbol of peace ready and you know it would just spark up a giant conversation news stations would talk about it and it would just be going around worldwide this is when we're kind of just going to skip on over to the day of the usj seeing as there's not going to be any more real content to cover in terms of any real stuff that's going to be happening from here on out just due to the fact that well i mean all that really happens is Deku hangs out with Nezu, he works out with Kirishima, but I already talked about that a little bit, so, you know, it'd basically just be a repeat. So, instead, I'm just gonna, you know, skip on over to the day of the USJ. All of the students would basically be in class, and they would be asking Deku just how he did what he had done. Deku would tell them that it was no real big deal, and that, you know, he just... You know, he, he went all out. He lied to them all purposefully just because, of course, he doesn't want to tell people. And this would actually lead to Shigaraki, Kuragiri, and, like, the League of Villains just questioning whether they should or shouldn't attack. Because from what they're hearing, there's a student that's even more powerful than All Might. And they're questioning whether they should or shouldn't attack. This is when the UA Trader would actually give some intel to the League of Villains. And they would tell them that the student was far more powerful than All Might. It seems as if he was even holding back and this this is basically when they would all i was gonna leave it off there but i decided you know what i'm gonna keep it going just just a little longer 22 minutes long come on i gotta give y'all more content than that come on anyways this is when they would all go inside and instead of having just the boring the like like the attack on the usj nothing would happen 
See, the villains aren't quite prepared for this. All they have is normal Nomus, and after being told that the student was even more powerful than All Might, and that it seems as if All Might isn't even declining at all, they immediately just pulled out of that because All For One gave Shigaraki the orders not to do it. If it was on Shigaraki's behalf, he definitely would have done that, just because Shigaraki at this point isn't smart. And, you know, this would lead into them trying to create even more powerful Nomus. So the high-end Nomus, they'd start getting created even earlier on than in the original canon. And this is when 13 would basically look at all of the students. Actually would say, alright guys, today's speech is going to consist of, you know, just some normal stuff. I hope you guys enjoyed the trip here and I hope you guys enjoyed the video, seeing as... Okay, so we're just going to be kicking this story off right after where we had left off. At this current moment, Deku basically got to the USJ and 13 was giving her instructions. At this point, All Might and Aizawa would proceed to start helping out the students with the USJ stuff, and since there would really be no villains, there's really no real material for me to cover here. I mean, I, there's not really much to say. The only real thing that happens in this version is that everybody ends up having a pretty good time, and that's pretty much all I can say for what's been going on in this part. That being said though, they basically go back to school and they proceed to have a normal school week to which everything is just kind of blandish I guess you could say there's not really anything that happens other than you know all the students basically get told about the US festival one week earlier than in canon meaning that they have one week to prepare rather than the one and two days that they actually had although I feel like the two week break that they had or no the one week break was actually a little more helpful just due to the fact that I mean you get two weeks other rather than, you know, like one week in school where you only get like half of the day to train and stuff like that. Anyways, with that being said, the people from the other classrooms would, of course, still end up coming to UA. And this would lead to Bakugo calling everybody else's extras. Everybody else would basically have their normal replies. And this is when, you know, everybody would kind of just leave UA. Instead of Deku being the one who apologizes on Bakugo's behalf, Uraraka is actually the one who steps up and just says, hey, hey, hey uh, he's a little bit of a hothead. He didn't mean what he said. Like, we're, we're not all like him. And, you know, all that basically happens. And since they didn't really have the USJ attack, many of the classes that arrived there aren't there. The only people who are present is Shinso and Class 1B. So that is a little bit of a minor change, but nothing too drastic. That being said, after all that basically happens, we are now going to be cutting on over to the side of Nezu. At this point, they would be holding a meeting with the teachers, discussing whether Deku should or shouldn't be allowed to even take place in the USJ. A lot of people start saying that he shouldn't just due to the fact that the kid's already more powerful than All Might. If we really wanted to, we could throw him out into the streets and he'd be like the number one hero in about one year or less. And a lot of people would start agreeing with that notion. They would say he lacks experience, but power? Nobody can contest him with that. People would just start talking about Deku. Some would praise him and some people would say that he's too strong for their own good. And, you know, it would just kind of be like, like divided in terms of like people saying he should and he shouldn't some people would say that they should let him take part because it would just show people that ua is a formidable place and that they have a future number one hero in their ranks but after all this nezu kind of just did that as a formality you know he was he was gonna let deku in either way because that's his boy come on now like he can't just tell Deku, like, oh yeah, bro, by the way, uh, you know, I know we're drinking tea and all, but you, you kind of can't uh, participate, and Deku would just be like, bruh, like, 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 that's not it. Ultimately, Nezu would say, hell yeah, he can come in, that's my boy, and, you know, everybody would kind of just be forced to agree, just due to the fact that, I mean, he's literally the principal. <clears throat> Plus, half of the other people thought it was a good idea. So by the end of everything, everything would be all good. And at the end of class, Deku would actually be called in by Nezu to kind of talk for a little bit. He would call in Deku and ask him if he can, you know, come in after school and they can just talk about some stuff. Nezu would then begin to talk to Deku about the meeting and he would explain to Deku that some heroes would actually think that Deku is perfectly ready for to go out into the big streets. He would ask Deku if he thinks that's true. And Deku would say that, you know, it's, it is true, you know, he could probably just watch a hero do his normal stuff, and from that he could probably create a successful agency, but that's not really his goal. So he would say that that's not really what he wants to do. So to stay in UA, you know, he kind of wants to go through things and, you know, do things the right way, I guess you could say. So people don't say, oh, you know, he cheated his way, he's just too strong, you know? And that's kind of what Deku and Nezu were talking about. 
Now, at this current moment as well, other stuff is actually going down on the villain side of things. If you guys do remember from the last part, there me, the fact that there is no USJ attack and the fact that nothing ended up happening means that a lot of the soldiers and like just small time villains that they have are actually usable. A lot of the small time thugs are actually, you know, in their ranks. And this would actually lead to all for one, you know, kind of working on more high end no moves as well as working on recruiting one more member to the League of Villains. This villain being Stain. And due to the fact that this is happening before Ida's brother can ever get injured, Stain would end up joining the League of Villains and not injure his brother or, you know, Ida's brother just because he's not going to be out on the streets this day. He's actually going to be training Shigaraki due to the fact that All for One actually told that to Stain. And in exchange for that, he would give him a quirk. Now, this quirk would be a sort of danger sense for Stain. It would amplify his ability to dodge attacks kind of in the same way that Deku can in the manga and he would recruit him for the attack on the heroes, students, and All Might in the USJ. If All For One's going to throw an attack, it's going to be on full scale. So yeah, due to this, Ida's brother's good and the villains are pretty much planning an attack. That's pretty much all that's really going on in terms of stuff right now. Now, this is when we're just going to skip on over to about three days before the UA uh, little attack is actually going to happen at the US, UA Sports Festival. And Deku would just be in with Nezu in the weight room like usual, just lifting some weights. Deku would say that this is pretty bored. And this is when Nezu would say, I knew you'd say that. And he would literally proceed to grab like a, a barbell. The barbell itself is like 500, like, no, no, no. The barbell itself is like 500 tons. Yeah, it's, I don't think he's that strong. Uh, the barbell itself is like, 30 tons right and it has like 100 tons on each side right that's how heavy all this stuff is he would give it to Deku and Deku would pick it up as he would literally just start bench pressing that and Deku would start getting a drop of sweat down his face as he would say that's better as you know Deku would finally start feeling it a little bit more and man Deku is uh you know he's having a pretty good time you know he's finally working out good and this would lead to Deku basically <clears throat> just talking with Nezu a little bit after all this is said and done. Deku would basically look at Nezu and ask him if he should hold back. To which Nezu would tell him, I mean, I don't really see why he should. He needs to show people how powerful he is. Maybe by filling seeing that, crime rate might drop or something like that. And Deku would look at Nezu as he would tell him that All Might's productivity, productivity actually went up. So if anything, all, crime rate will probably stay the same. And at this point, crime rate would be like 6%, I guess, is like a decent amount. No way, 10%. Yeah, I'm going to go with 10% just because, you know, it sounds a little bit more reasonable. That being said, I'm kind of just going to skip on over to the day of the UA Sports Festival where all of the action is going to be taking place. Now, this is when everybody would basically arrive to the UA Sports Festival. And of course, we would still have normal scenes up until the point when Deku is told to go up and give the speech. The original canon Bakugo was, but you know, our boy Deku did crush the, uh, wait, no. Did Deku even take that, that exam? I'm pretty sure this version took. Yeah, 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 he did destroy robots, he did, he did, I'm tripping, or did, did, did he or did he not, no, 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 I'm just gonna say he did, and if I said he didn't, uh, retcon that, but, uh, yeah, that being said, though, this is when Deku would be walking up to the podium, as, you know, he would kind of just be thinking what speech he should make, I mean, he has, like, a hundred options off top, like, does he make people think that, you know, they're safe with him, like, does he cheer everybody up, does he, like, say some corny stuff, like, Deku's just wondering what kind of speech he's gonna go with, and it's at this moment that Deku grabs the microphone, brings it up to his face, right as he starts, immediately, there would be an explosion on the left side of the building. It's at this point that after the explosion would go off, multiple people would fall off of the stands, severely injuring multiple bystanders. And this would have actually ended up killing hundreds of people and injuring even more. This is when, like, out of nowhere from the top, mustard, the criminal mustard would come in and he would start releasing a toxic gas that would knock people out left and right. It's at this point that Deku would stare over to the crater that was created by the explosion. And it's when immediately Deku would see eye to eye with all for one. 
As Deku would see him, he'd get a little bit of a smile on his face as he would crack his knuckles and just think that this is his perfect opportunity to show the world how safe they'll be in his hand. Deku would immediately just look at, at, at All for One and before he can even go after him, a bunch of high-end Nomu would just start swarming into the stands. Villains and heroes would just be swarming in there and people would start running out of the USJ, or no, the UA Sports Festival Arena. As this is when airplanes would start coming in and camera crew just coming out of nowhere as they're trying to get every single piece of action. It's at this point that Deku legit just says this will be fun. And he just starts blitzing people. Like he literally starts blitzing Nomu straight moderating. Like like being like moderate to everyone. He would literally just be blo like shooting uh, like Nen beams at like the, the Nomu's heads to obliterate them and not let them regenerate. And like everybody would be going crazy so it's like pretty much just a giant like s-h-i-t show like it's literally just a giant shit show right and uh you may be wondering why i like said s-h-i-t instead of just saying the word if i was just gonna say it later on well you know i kind of don't want to get you know a yellow a yellow money sign on my video if you know what that means then good if you don't then you know someone will probably tell you in the comments if you ask if you ask the question anyways this is when everything will basically just be in complete chaos up until finally something different happens. At this point, All Might was blitzing over towards All For One, but before he could do that, three Nomus would come over to All Might and a couple of them would start like literally just grabbing onto his side where he formerly had his injury and they would begin to start basically attacking and just completely bombarding All Might. Like, they'd be going crazy to say the least. Now, this is when like all Might would basically start battling them and he'd actually have a pretty rough time i mean like all Might is healed but that doesn't mean he's as strong as his prime self it would take about let's say 40 hits each nomu to defeat and all Might would definitely be able to do that but you know there is three all Might attacking him continuously so he doesn't exactly get the perfect chance to do that now this is when all for one would look at deku and just basically be smiling under the mask obviously Deku can't see the smile and offer one would teleport over to Nezu's location this is when offer one would pick up Nezu by the throat and literally just hold him out as he would grab the little microphone and say all of you have been living under constant peace but now I think we should throw a little bit of um, uncertainty into the mix and as soon as Deku hears that, he'd be just destroying no moves. Like, he'd have a smile on his face. He would have been having a blast. And camera crew would have just been seeing Deku just obliterate no moves left and right. He was, as I said earlier, pulling a moderate on all of the villains. He would have taken out muscular, Dobby, you know, people like that. Just left this easily. He just completely destroyed all those people. And this is when Deku would, in that split second that off and went on that, Deku would look up and see All for One grabbing Nezu by the neck. As Nezu's kind of struggling to take off his hand, and All for One would begin to tighten his grip on, on Nezu's neck. And when Deku sees this, you would just see Deku's eyes widen as his rage would overflow and his Nen would immediately go insane as he would begin to use Ren and the entire stadium would just be frozen in complete fear to Deku. None of them have a resistance to Nen plus the fact that Deku is using like like the man is using his maximum output. So all of the people who aren't like incredibly OP including no moves would just drop. The, literally the only people who are there to witness what's about to happen is All Might and All For One who can barely, barely stand. It's at this point that Deku would blitz, immediately blitz over to Nezu and just shoot, uh, and just shoot a rage blast right at All For One's head, just completely wiping it off of the, wiping it off of the map. Like, he literally just destroyed All For One, just completely. And this is when Deku would just proceed to go in down as he would continue to basically beat down on All For One's like just already dead body. As he would obliterate any villains that like were slightly hanging onto one consciousness, Deku would just look around as his anger is overflowing and he would stare down at All Might as like Deku just looks at All Might and thinks that it's on site, but this one All Might would basically run over to Deku and tell him that it's okay. As Nezu would do the same and just basically be like, <coughs> Thank you, Midoriya. 
as it's at this point that Deku would snap out of it and he would see Nezu's just fine. As Deku would smile and say that he's so glad. As just as I already said, this was all on the news. See, the camera crew was high up into the air, far enough and out of Deku's Ren range. So they weren't affected by any of his Nen aura and the crew members were actually able to capture that whole entire situation from a far, a very far distance, might I add. After this, people would literally just be like absolutely silenced and people watching this on their TVs would just be going crazy saying that that kid is literally going to be the next symbol of peace and that they have nothing to worry about with somebody like him and All Might on their streets. Like people would just start tweeting and going crazy like Deku's images and pictures would just go all over the map and you would just see Deku standing there literally ripped shirtless with the UA sports festival pants on just looking up in like a really sexy pose no homo and uh you know I know a lot of you guys are probably gonna be like Zether mad I'm gonna need you to you know show me that pass all right, all right hear me out here hear me out here you know like it was for comedic relief all right don't 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 come at me and <laughs> anyways this is when Deku would literally proceed <clears throat> to just help with the cleaning out of like all the villains. And about a couple of hours later, no, a couple of minutes later, a bunch of the people who were knocked out would wake up. As it's at this point that like literally like the like counselors like of the of Japan would literally have a meeting with each other and decide whether Deku should even be allowed to continue with his hero work. I mean, he literally killed a villain in front of millions on live television. And people are honestly debating whether Deku should or shouldn't be allowed. People who are just bad people, like like people who are just like just ignorant, would be the ones who are like, no, like he he killed somebody. Nobody deserved the death penalty. Heroes are not allowed to, you know, people like that. Like like literally, Karens would be the ones being like, no, like he shouldn't be allowed to. And everybody else, like including kids, would all just be like, yeah, like like what? Like let the kid, like the man is overpowered. We need this man. And yeah, everybody would basically just be debating all of what just happened as as at this point that Deku just basically gets told that yeah he will be allowed to continue because a majority vote did say that Deku should be let off the hook scot-free and All Might even testified like with Deku saying that that was actually one of the most powerful notorious villains of the world all if not most villains know of all for one's existence and after that was brought out to the media, you best believe they were going even more crazy. Some high schooler, literal high schooler, freshman, destroyed like the top villain of the world. So, yeah, Deku, um, Deku's set. And it's at this point that they would basically go back to class as Deku would arrive and everybody would just welcome Deku with open arms. They'd be surrounding Deku, just being like, dude. You were awesome. And when Midnight would walk into the class, she would wink at Deku as Deku just looks at that and he just kind of looks at Midnight as he smiles a little bit. And it's at this point that she would begin to explain to the class that, you know, she is actually going to be there to help them decide on their hero names. Everybody would decide on the normal hero names that they got in canon except for Deku. Deku would end up picking the name Meruem as everybody would be like, yo, why'd you pick Meruem? And Deku would begin to explain that, you know, it just sounds pretty cool. And people would start agreeing with Deku. By the way, Deku's hero costume is actually going to be Marum's outfit just because a lot of you guys actually agreed with that. And so that's what I'm going to be going with. That being said, this is when we are now going to have to cover the internship. As after class was over and everybody decided stuff and Deku was basically just waiting after class, Midnight would actually catch Deku in the hallway as she would ask Deku for his number. Deku would give Midnight her number, his number, and Midnight would just basically smile at Deku as she would say that, you know, she just needed it just in case anyone ever in trouble. You know, that's really why she got it. And um, I'm going to let you guys decide whether I should, you know, con like whether I should do a little something with Midnight or I should just keep it no ship and have Midnight actually have good intentions. 
you guys let me know down below in the comments okay so we start off our story right where i had left off after midnight ends up asking for deku's number now as you guys do remember on the last part i had said that deku ends up going to the internship with all might well i also ended up asking you guys whether midnight and deku should have a little bit of a thing happen seeing as you know there isn't a ship and i've never done a midnight ship and i was wondering if you guys would want one now i understand the ship wasn't really gonna fit meruem's character however this isn't exactly all meruem so it kind of makes sense if you really think about it. That being said though, this is when Deku would end up going home and Kirishima would walk up to Deku as he would ask Deku who he's going to internship with. Deku would say he's going to be interning with All Might since, you know, he really honestly has no other choices and Kirishima says that's awesome. He would also ask Deku if he wants to go to the weight room and Deku would say sure as they would end up going there and Nezu would already be there so he would have like a towel wrapped around his neck and he'd be wearing a pretty cool shirt you know, workout shirt, as Nezu would be lifting a solid, a solid 10 pounds, you know, he'd be lifting a solid 10 pounds, you know, he's going for high reps, not, you know, not, uh, not low reps, heavy weight, right, and our boy Nezu is just, you know, lifting that way, you know, he's going crazy, he's, he's going insane, he's lifting up the barbell, right, now, this is when Deku would look at Nezu and just start kind of smiling as he would then start hitting some sets with Kirishima and he would start spotting, you know, Kirishima a little bit as they would both just start working out as they usually do. And this is when halfway through everything, Midnight would send Deku a text asking him if he wants to internship with her. She would send him a little bit of a winky face and tell him that, you know, he, she would actually be willing to teach him some other stuff other than how to just become a hero. And Deku, after seeing that message, would ask what she means. It's at this moment that she would send some water emojis and after seeing that, Deku immediately knows what she means. Deku would think about this and wonder whether he should, you know, take part in um, inter uh, study. <clears throat> <clears throat> studying as you know Deku would just kind of text back and say sure thing as this is when Deku would kind of not really think about it too much he would then end up finishing up the day as it's immediately when afterwards he would get a picture sent to him by midnight and it would of course be a picture of a math book of course you know like a math book you know the one that he has to pick up from the library as Deku would look at that and you know he'd smile and this is when Deku would proceed to basically just go home as he would end up just having a normal date, go home, his mother Inka would make him some dinner, and Deku would just kind of go to the next day. As he would take a train at Midnight's um, agency, Deku would arrive, to which immediately Midnight starts kind of throwing, uh, showing Deku what it's like to become a hero, as well as uh, throwing books at him, if you get what I'm saying. You know, by books, I mean herself. And uh, <clears throat> Deku would proceed to uh, learn about multiplication. You know, he'd start learning biology and uh, he, he's a very hands on, you know, a very, you know, very, very hands on learner, I guess you could say. Right. Deku ends up, you know, he ends up getting an A plus from midnight. And that's basically what happens in the internship. Deku does a whole lot of studying. He studies up on how to become a hero, his math, his books, the tech books. It's beautiful. You know, we all love this version of Deku. <laughs> Anyways, now we have them all go back to school and this is when they all would end up going through the events of the finals and the race. Of course, they returned back to school where they would have the race and Kirishima would ask Deku what he had done. Deku would proceed to tell Kirishima that he learned a little bit about how to become a hero and other stuff. At midnight, would actually walk into the room and she would wink at Deku to which nobody would be able to see and she would end up just giving her normal lessons, right? At this point, All Might would then take the kids and they would have the race to see who can rescue him the fastest. Of course, Deku ends up winning and this would lead into Aizawa actually explaining to all the students that they are actually going to be having Forest Training Camp arc. And seeing as there's no real anything going on with UA and All Might is actually healed, they're all going to be present. Of course, the USJ attack was a big hit for UA, however, they were able to bounce back from it fast due to the fact that Deku was around, he was able to save everything everything so they would have about two weeks to study for everything and Deku would of course ace the written exam Deku during this time would kind of you know just hang out with Kirishima and Nezu and that little routine is basically all that he does in terms of the finals Deku of course ends up fighting against All Might but 
it's just a one-sided stomp. I don't even want to cover it. Though, actually, you know, I might as well. Deku and All Might would face each other as Deku is actually on a team with Kirishima. He'd grab Kirishima and grab his arm as he would literally throw Kirishima towards All Might's direction. And Kirishima would just get blown straight at Deku as immediately Deku would basically tell Kirishima to finish All Might off as Kirishima would say right and he would then say Red Riot as immediately he would start using the abilities of Red Riot the ones that he ends up learning later on in the series except this version of uh, Kirishima actually ends up learning them a little late earlier on than the original Kirishima does so this is when Deku would proceed to, well, essentially just go through with all this like little normal stuff that usually happens in the My Hero Academia timeline stuff. And, you know, after this, Kirishima would blitz towards All Might. You know, he'd hit him head on, kind of like in a Gohan when he hit Raditz type thing. That ends up happening, causing All Might to, you know, gasp for air. And immediately, Deku would blitz behind him as he elbows All Might's head straight to the ground, and All Might is just done for. After that, that's basically all that happens. All Might has to sit in Recovery Girl's like little office thing for about two hours to heal, and Deku just kind of works out with Nezu and Kirishima. My boy Nezu's getting, you know, he's, he's getting pretty toned, you know, if I do say so myself. And of course, this is when we're now going to cover the Forest Training Arc. However, villains are all taken care of so the forest training arc has no real content to cover of course the forest beast stuff happens but do you guys really want me to sit here and spend 20 minutes talking about how they defeat little weak monsters especially with the fact that deku can literally Madara like shinobi alliance these characters and since there is no villain attack it all just goes to canon the only real thing that there is to cover is that you know koda doesn't end up hitting deku so deku's uh his um family prize is still there and with no villains comes no hideout raid with no hideout raid just comes the provisional hero license exam mark to which deku and the whole class would end up going to and of course deku would end up just getting swarmed by all of the other classes as well as being asked by other people you know what his quirk is you know they're wondering what deku's all about kirishima and deku would kind of be bros at this point not like in like the term where it's like normal friends but deku would kind of consider kirishima you know someone who's sort of a friend to deku just due to the fact that you know kirishima and deku kind of have a little bit of an understanding with each other not in like a crazy way but yeah and bakugo bakugo still salty about how hard deku ended up whooping him so yeah that's basically all that ends up happening bakugo ends up failing it and todoroki ends up failing the exam just because they're both you know i don't really think that they would pass in this version still so they would both end up failing and we are now going to cover them all going back to class and meeting the big three now immediately when mirio walks into the class he would see deku and immediately just feel the need to challenge deku this would lead into deku getting challenged by mirio and mirio would of course end up taking a l mirio would have actually caught deku off guard with his ability to phase through because deku would have actually tried to simply hit mirio's pressure points but due to the fact that mirio could just phase through him he wasn't able to touch him so afterwards mirio was actually able to almost get it hit in on deku but deku's reflexes were just too fast for him and he would end up using his nen abilities to sense mirio's location as before he could have even attacked him deku was able to sense where mirio was gonna hit even when mirio like did the poking eye thing deku can still see without his eyes using nen so he was able to dodge and punch deku i mean punch mirio right back i know some of y'all are gonna clown me for that in the comments down below just just get it over with and this would lead to deku actually having a little bit of a liking towards mirio however deku ends up going with kirishima's fat gum internship because well you know he wants to go with kirishima's bro so he ends up doing that and instead of going with uh midnight uh mirio is the only one that you know ends up doing that this leads into Mirio being the only one who witnesses Eri, and he would be the only one who ends up feeling bad in this version of events. Now, it's at this point that Deku would, of course, you know, just be brought up because, you know, Kirishima was brought when they had, like, the little, the work stories, the work, the work, uh, the hero work study stuff, and they rounded up all the heroes and, like, uh, student heroes that they could get. Deku was actually a part of that, so this means that the raid on Shisaki or Overhaul would end up happening but with everything happening a lot easier than it did in canon immediately after deku realizes that mirio let 
a girl get like like somebody literally take that girl and continue to do the things he was doing to her Deku would give Mirio a death stare which would literally just have everybody in the room just be in fear of Deku like they realized how powerful he was and all of them already knew the extent of Deku's power he this man is broken like this man is insane right just 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 to put it lightly and like he showed even more of that insanity for what he was about to do so um yeah definitely did a pretty great job anyways that being said though this is when we will now actually jump over to them all actually arriving to overhaul's base where ryuk the dragon hero would bust in through the gate and they would all end up rushing in everywhere mirio would of course end up making it to overhaul first and this would lead into mirio getting his quirk erased just like in canon however when deku ends up arriving to overhaul's location what actually no i think deku would actually be able to stop the bullet from hitting mirio because this version of deku can sense where overhaul's at so he literally just busts straight through the walls and he's able to arrive to off um overhaul's location leading to deku actually taking the bullet instead of mirio and immediately after he would use his nen to basically cause uh, overhaul to literally pass out he would project his negative intent towards him and immediately just overhaul would drop like it's over for overhaul is just done for after this deku grabs like overhaul's head and smashes it into the pavement as airy sees what deku just did deku would then walk over to airy and airy would seem a little scared at first but deku would then reach his hand out and she would feel how warm deku's hands are deku would then take airy and like kind of bring her in as he would grab her and tell mirio to get up that if he wasn't strong enough he might as well have just waited for the rest of them he would then look towards mirio and say that at least he tried though and he would then proceed to just kind of go through with all of these normal real kind of little events happening um what's it called airy would end up getting over the fear of overhaul and the ua sports festival stuff would still happen with uh not not sports but school festival with the gentle stuff but instead, this version of Deku doesn't actually end up forgetting the stuff. And so when Gentle tries to do something at UA, Deku just completely obliterates him. Like, it, it's not even a contest. As soon as uh, Gentle would come in being like, Ah, oh, yes, I am a villain. Like, like trying to record with Labrava. Deku would literally just blitz over there flick him with his finger and gentle would just be flung into the forest with la brava they would both be taken into custody and that's pretty much what happens to in terms of that the joint training arc stuff would still happen but it's kind of a one-sided massacre as almost all of these little things are meaning that later on no meta liberation arc because that doesn't end up happening with the villains instead it actually ends up happening with the heroes but Deku was in present. All Might, as well as Endeavor and Hawks, and a couple of other low, uh, a couple of other like low tier pro heroes are the ones who end up actually handling that whole stuff when they get out of control. And that's basically what ends up happening in terms of events for the story. Nothing else really ends up happening for this story of what if Deku was Marum's reincarnation. So this is basically where I'm going to be ending this story off. I know guys, today's videos were extremely short. I know, I know, I know. And I do apologize. I know usually I bring you guys 30 minute, 20 minute parts. However, I like I said yesterday's, this part was really short due to the fact that the, that the villains were all taken out in the school festival instead of how everything ended up happening in the original canon due to the fact that Deku was more powerful villains didn't attack at the usj so they ended up attacking at this festival and that led to major major ramifications i should do a series like this more often and finish them off real quickly <laughs> some of you guys are probably like no don't do that zether please but uh <laughs> yeah oh also in terms of midnight and deku that never ended up becoming a ship that was just a one-time thing by the way for those of you who are like no midnight and deku <laughs> Oh, yeah, no, there was no ship. And Deku just kind of went on to become the number one hero. Deku ended up accomplishing his goal. He removed crime rate of Japan to 0%. And he then went on to become the greatest hero there ever was. Meruem was a name revered and feared by all villains in the nation. And that is what would happen if Deku was Meruem's reincarnation. Or what I think would have happened. If any of you guys want to do this th series as well, what if Deku was Mary's reincarnation, feel free to. And um, 
it'll be fun to see any of you guys' takes on it, seeing as I dropped the what it, how to make what if YouTube video. So if you want to do this or any of my other series, don't even credit me, bro. Just don't copy my story and we'll be straight. But this is where I'm going to be finishing off today's video. I hope you guys did enjoy the story, seeing as this was a really fun story to make. What if Deco's Marriage Reincarnation is definitely something for the books. But with that being said, though, guys, you guys all know the drill. It has been your boy Zether, and I am out. Peace.